Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mr. Valadez. I am the principal of Lakeview Charter Academy. Buenas tardes, uh, familias y estudiantes. Yo soy el señor Valadez, el director de aquí de Lakeview Charter Academy. I'm going to give the floor to our wonderful assistant principal, Ms. Ashraf. Good evening, families. It is so nice to see all of you and welcome you to LCA. This is an exciting time of year. I have been in middle school education for 14 years, I'll get into that. And coming into middle school is always exciting. We look forward to meeting all of you, hopefully soon in person and getting to know all of our wonderful sixth graders throughout this year. Uh, esa es la señora Ashraf, es la subdirectora de la escuela. Es mi, uh, la que me ayuda con todo, la que trabajamos juntos para hacer todo, trabajar aquí en la LCA con los maestros y con las familias y los estudiantes. So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat. Ms. Ashraf will answer them in the chat. Si tienen preguntas, uh, pueden ponerlo en el chat, por favor. La señora uh, Ashraf las va, les va a dar la respuesta. We will also have some time afterwards in case you guys do have any questions that we didn't answer. Hopefully this presentation answers a lot of your questions. Okay, so sixth grade, welcome to our school. You've never been here. This is your first year here at our school. So we wanna welcome you. Our mascot here at our school is warrior. It's a warrior, so we are warriors here. Uh, buenas, uh, buenas noches y, y felicidades a los estudiantes que van a empezar con nosotros en el sexto grado aquí en Lakeview Charter Academy. Um, queremos decirles que les damos la bienvenida y les damos las gracias por, uh, por um, estar con nosotros. Uh, y les queremos decir que nuestra, uh, nuestra pers persona que es de la escuela, o eh, nosotros somos guerreros. Así que eso es la, la, lo que tenemos nosotros aquí en, en Lakeview Charter Academy, somos guerreros. So here's a little bit of the agenda. We're gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna introduce your teachers. Um, we're gonna talk about returning to school and what you need to do on a daily basis with the daily health screening. Um, we're gonna talk about the weekly COVID testing because as of right now, the county is requiring for all students and all um, staff to uh, do COVID testing regardless of vaccination or not. Um, we are so, we're also gonna talk about baseline testing, which is next week. Uh, which we want our students to come in to test before the start of the, the, the new uh, the school year. We have to have the baseline testing done in order for them to start at our school. We're going to talk about uniforms. We're also going to talk about independent studies, um, the sixth grade expectations, and reading expectations. So vamos a hablar un poquito de, van a, les voy a introducir a los maestros para que conozcan quiénes son. Vamos a hablar de cuando regresan a la escuela los estudiantes, las cosas que tienen que hacer todos los días, diariamente. Um, vamos a hablar también de los exámenes de COVID que vamos a tomar cada semana. No importa si los estudiantes y si los maestros están vacunados, tenemos que tomar el examen a uh, cada semana. También tenemos una información porque necesitamos a todos nuestros estudiantes del sexto grado que vengan para la siguiente semana para que tomen el examen de COVID el baseline, porque esa tenemos que tener los resultados para cuando empiecen la escuela. También vamos a hablar de los uniformes, estudios independent, independientes, a uh, las expectativas del sexto grado y también las expectativas de lectura. So welcome to Puck Lake View Charter Academy. Um, as you'll, you'll find out from me, I've been here for many, 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 many years. Uh, I was actually born next door and this is not a lie. I was actually born next door. It used to be a hospital. Uh, it was Pacoima Lutheran Hospital, and I was born there a long time ago. Um, but uh, it is nice to come to the community, come back to the community. Um, these are our three commitments that Puck Schools came up with about 14, 15 years ago, maybe, or even a, a longer than that. Um, commitment number one is that we have five times more college graduates within the communities we serve. Um, commitment number two, that after four years with us at Puck Schools, your student is proficient. Um, and then commitment number three is that students commit to uplift their communities now and forever. So um, these are our commitments that we use at all Puck Schools, but we also have our own promises practice here at Lakeview Charter Academy. Quería hablarles un poquito de que um, aquí tenemos nuestras promesas que tenemos para las escuelas Puck, que estas salieron hace como 15 años. Yo tengo muchos años aquí en la escuela Puck, en las escuelas Puck trabajando. Yo también nací aquí al lado de la escuela, era un hospital. 
Uh, y si no me creen, si era hospital, era el Pacoima Lutheran Hospital. Uh, yo nací ahí hace muchos, muchos años, el año de la cachetada. Um, pero queremos decirle que las promesas que tenemos aquí, la promesa número uno es que queremos cinco más veces de estudiantes que se cinco más veces graduados de la universidad uh, de nuestras escuelas. El, la promesa número dos es que después de cuatro años queremos tener a nuestros estudiantes al nivel donde deben de estar de su grado. Um, y el, el, la promesa número tres es queremos que ellos se comiten a trabajar en su, en su comunidad para que puedan subir a su comunidad también. Así como lo estoy haciendo yo. Yo estoy regresando a mi, a mi, a mi comunidad. So for those students that are here and for the parents, so you know what a Lake, Lakeview Warrior looks like. Uh, they uh, they think uh, thinks critically and positively, speaks thoughtfully, and acts with integrity. That is important for us here at Lakeview Charter Academy. Uh, lo cosa, los guerreros que, que lo que hacen aquí en las escuelas de nosotros aquí en, en Lakeview Charter Academy es que ellos piensan criticalmente y positivamente, um, hablan con uh, hablan bien, con pensamiento bien, y también uh, se actúan con integridad. So here at Lakeview Charter Academy for our sixth grade families, we have something that's called the four P's. Um, it's prompt, prepared, professional, and productive. Those are our four P's that we have here. They're gonna be all over the school. Students are gonna see them everywhere, in the bathrooms, in the hallways, in the classrooms, in the offices, everywhere. We're gonna put them everywhere because we want the students to understand that this is what we go by here at Lakeview Charter Academy. Our teachers will talk about them in the classroom. If someone doesn't behave, which 4P are you not following? We need you to come back. Come back as a warrior and let's be ready to work. Um, so we're really, really excited. Um, these are the things that we do as warriors for prompt, prepare, professional, and productive. Um, queremos decirles que aquí en la Escuela de Lakeview Charter Academy tenemos las cuatro P's, que es um, prompt, que quiere decir a tiempo, uh, prepared, preparados, prof professional, profesionales, and productive, productivos. Entonces, estas son las cuatro P's que usamos en la escuela. Las vamos a tener alrededor de toda la escuela. Vamos a tenerlos en los pasillos, en los salones, en las oficinas, en los baños, para que se acuerden los estudiantes que estas son nuestras cosas que usamos aquí, las palabras que usamos aquí en Lakeview Charter Academy. Why does this all matter? ¿Por qué importa todo esto? Why does it matter? Well, in two, in three years, your student is going to be in the eighth grade seat and they're going to be graduating. And when they graduate, when they graduate, we're going to want to make sure that they're ready and prepared for high school. So what we want to do is not only that, sixth graders, you have an advantage because you're starting already barely in sixth grade. So if you get good grades throughout the three years, cumulative GPA throughout three, year, three years, you'll be able to be either in honors or high honors for graduation. And what we do in graduation is that we honor you. Uh, we have you stand up and we give you a special type of rope. So for the honor students, we give them a, a, a silver rope, which is a 3.0 to a 3.49 GPA. And for our high honors, which is our 3.5 to 4.0 GPA, we give them a gold rope. So they wear it for graduation. And, uh, you know, you show off that you're one of the honors or high honors. So we want to celebrate you. We also want you to be college and career ready. Um, we want to prepare you for high school. We want you to make sure that you are prepared for high school and beyond and ready to go on and, uh, you know, be developing all these skills that you need in the 21st century. Um, we also want you to be good members of the community. We want um, you to learn uh, and develop all uh, in the middle school and high school. We want you to to help you engage into being good citizens and ready for the future. That's what that's what's very important for us. It's not about just learning in sixth grade and then you forget about it. No, we want you to take it with you because it's kind of like a stepping stone. When you learn something here, then you go up to the next grade level and then you go up to the next grade level. And that's what we want. We want you to learn all this stuff because it's gonna prepare you not only for, for LCA, but also for high school and for college. So queremos que, ¿por qué importa todo esto? Es porque nos gusta celebrar a nuestros estudiantes número uno. Nos gusta uh, que para la graduación en tres años del octavo grado, para los estudiantes, es algo muy importante para ellos, para ustedes las familias. Entonces, lo que queremos hacer es que ahorita los estudiantes de, del sexto grado tienen una ventaja porque apenas van a empezar con nosotros. Así que si ellos empiezan con buenos grados de aquí al octavo grado, 
se les va a hacer uh, el puntuaje de los tres años. Y si los estudiantes tienen un puntuaje de 3.0 a 4.0, pueden estar en honores y en honores altos. 3.0 a 3.49 es honores y de 3.5 a 4 es honores altos. En la graduación los vamos a poder distinguir porque les damos un lazo color uh, plata para los estudiantes de honores y color oro para los, los estudiantes que están en honores altos. Eh, así nos gusta celebrarlos para que se pueda notar que esos estudiantes han trabajado los tres años uh, muy duro y es una recompensa en que nosotros los vamos a reconocer en la graduación. También queremos que estén listos para el colegio y para su trabajo cuando ellos estén más grandes. No solamente queremos que ellos se preparen aquí y ya se les olvide lo que aprendieron para el siguiente año. Queremos que sigan la etapa. Queremos que se preparen ahorita para el high school y en la high school se preparen para el colegio um, para que puedan estar listos para esos, uh, esas herramientas que necesitan ahorita cuando empiecen en, en el trabajo. Um, también queremos que sean buenos miembros de la, de la, de la comunidad. Uh, queremos que las ideas y todo eso se ayude, les ayuden a ellos para que puedan fortalecerse y mejorar para que puedan hacer, um, estén listos para el futuro, para sus trabajos. So, quick introduction. So, we have two CEOs. So, on the left, you have Dr. Jacqueline Elliott. She is a co-founder and CEO of Puck National, but she was also the one that, uh, one of the co-founders that founded Puck Schools as well. But now she takes care of the central offices, which, which is our, our offices for Puck Schools. And then on the, on the right, we have our um, chief executive officer, our CEO of Puck Schools, which is Ms. Concepcion Rivas. She is the one that's in charge of all the schools. So she's the one as actually my boss, She's the one that helps me to become better, uh, be, become a better leader. I uh, helps uh, Ms. Ashraf and myself to become better leaders to make uh, this school even way better than what it is now. We also have our ladies in the office. I know a lot of you have been talking to them on the phone, so that way you can kind of picture who is who. Um, we have on the left, Ms. Uh, Ms. Aranda, who is our office manager. We also have an office assistant that's gonna start with us on Monday, and that is Ms. Angie Lopez. And then on the right, you have Ms. Maria Avitia, who's one of the other office assistants. These are the ladies that help you out. They answer the phone. These are the ones that are working in the office, helping uh, everyone out. And then you also have the LCA administration. So you have myself as a principal, Mr. Valadez. And then you also have Ms. Ashraf as the assistant principal. Here's a little bit, uh, uh, something little about me. Um, I've been at Puck Schools for 16 years. Um, I started off as a teacher. I was a teacher for a couple of years, then I became a parent coordinator, and then I worked uh, as an assistant principal, and then I became principal for, uh, for two schools. This is my second school as a principal. So I've been here for 16 years. I've been in different schools. Um, so that way, um, you know, we're just, uh, I'm just everywhere, but I've been here for 16 years. I celebrated my quinceañera last year. I'm celebrating my sweet 16 this year. So I'm really happy about that. Um, un poquito de mí para que conozcan. Uh, yo, yo tengo 16 años trabajando para las escuelas Puck. Um, el año pasado fue mi quinceñera. Este año va a ser mi Sweet 16. Es como la quinceñera para los 16. Pero yo empecé como maestro en uh, high school y luego en CCMS. Y luego uh, fui el subdirector de CCMS. Y luego me hice, trabajé con los padres un año. Y luego trabajé en muchos diferentes uh, lugares en Puck. Pero luego fui el director de uh, TCA y luego el director de aquí de LCA. And I'm going to let Ms. Ashraf talk a little bit about herself. Good evening. Um, I have also been at Puck for a long time. I actually started my career right here. Uh, this is um, my 14th year. 14th. At, I forgot to change that. I, this is my 14th year. So I started 14 years ago as a history teacher. I began my career as a seventh grade history teacher. I taught seventh grade for a few years. And then I taught sixth grade history for a few years. And then I taught eighth grade history for a few years. So in total, I was a teacher at CCMS for 10 years. If you have been to the campus, you may have noticed there's two other schools on campus. CCMS is the other middle school. So I didn't go far. I just went two schools down on the same campus when I became an assistant principal at Lakeview Charter, at Lakeview Charter Academy. So I've been uh, an educator now for 14 years, with Puck for 14 years. Do um, you know her, Daniel? I've been in... Um, uh, education for 14 years. 
I, I think middle school is the best time ever. I, it's a really important time for our students, for our kids. It's really a time of transition, of identity, of learning who you are as a person, of figuring things out. And middle school is really, really important. It's important for our students. It's important for our families. It's the first time families start to see um, students becoming a lot more independent. Uh, they're gonna maybe not communicate as much as they did when they were in elementary school. It's all part of uh, figuring out who they are. So I love middle school. I love being in middle school. I love working with middle schoolers. And I'm really excited to be on this journey with all of you. Thank you, Ms. Ashraf. Esta es la señora Ashraf. Ella tiene 14 años trabajando para Puck las escuelas Puck. Ella trabajó por 10 años en CCMS. Yo, yo trabajé con ella cuando yo era subdirector. Ella, ella fue uh, la maestra de, de historia. Um, entonces ya tenemos muchos años trabajando juntos y luego nos reencontramos aquí en Lakeview Charter Academy. Ella dice que aquí en las escuelas Puck, especialmente en middle school, en la secundaria, es cuando los estudiantes se están encontrando ellos mismos, están buscando la identidad Entonces queremos que sepan ustedes que estamos aquí para servirle a los estudiantes. I forgot to mention that I also started as a teacher when Mr. Valdez was my assistant principal. Yes. So I've known Mr. Valdez for 14 years. We've actually worked together for 14 years. Yes. Uh, a great working partnership, a great working relationship. And we are both really excited to be here together. For sure. LC. Thank you, Ms. Ashra. So um, we have Ms. Ochoa as your science teacher for the students. Um, she is a sixth grade science teacher. Um, she's been at Puck School since 2014. Um, she actually graduated from Puck School. She went to CCMS and then she went to CCECHS, which is right next door. She was actually the first founding class of this building, the buildings here. She, she was the first graduating class of Puck Schools for CCECHS. So she graduated from, uh, I used to teach her actually in high school. So um, she's a Puck alumni student. Um, she went to UC Riverside for her bachelor's. Um, she got it in anthropology and law and society. And then she went to Loyola Marymount for her master's in secondary education and science credentials. Um, she loves, uh, she has a love for learning and she does, she's very passionate. Um, and um, she says that she hopes all of you become lifelong learners if you're not already loving learning. Um, so this is Miss, Miss, uh, Miss Ochoa. Esta la señorita Ochoa es la, la maestra de ciencias de sexto grado. Uh, ella fue una estudiante de aquí de Puck Schools. Ella se graduó, ella fue la primera clase que se graduó del, de high school de la CCECHS. En el 2008, ella se graduó. Pero ella está aquí trabajando desde 2014 en las escuelas Puck. Um, ella fue a UC Riverside para su bachillerato. Fue a Loyola Marymount para su maestría. Dice que le encanta a uh, ella uh, ser maestra. Y también quiere que los estudiantes les encante también aprender. We have Mr. Marin, our history teacher. Um, he is a sixth grade history teacher. He graduated from California, from CSUN, California State University. Oh no, sorry, California State University, of Los Angeles and Mount St. Mary's. Um, he's uh, entering his ninth year in education. Um, and his vision is to empower students in a safe environment where they are valued for their individuality and diverse capabilities. Este es el señor Marin, es el maestro de historia del sexto grado. Tiene nueve años trabajando como maestro. Él se graduó de Cal State LA y también de Mount St. Mary's University. Um, dice que la visión para él es que para darle el poder a los estudiantes para que sepan que están en un lugar sano um, donde ellos están valuados uh, por su individualidad y sus, sus, uh, sus habilidades um, divers, diversas. Ok. We also have Mr. Peeler, who is our math teacher. I think he took this picture on purpose this way because he wants to be funny. Um, but um, this is his fifth year te teaching math. I believe that's his fifth year here at Lakeview Charter Academy. Um, he says he likes the approach of math by letting students know it's okay to make mistakes. Um, that's, how, that's how we learn and grow. Um, students in my class should expect to work hard, pra practice daily, and get better each day and every day. Even if, the grow, even if they grow a little bit, that's still growth. Um, he graduated from CSUN with honors and he loves to play the drums and really likes Frankenstein, as you can see. Um, so, él es el maestro de ciencia, de, de matemáticas del sexto grado, es el señor Peeler. 
Um, él es, este está en su quinto año de, de uh, maestro de matemáticas aquí en Lakeview Charter Academy. Dice que él le gusta que los estudiantes sepan que está bien si no hacen el trabajo bien. No hay problema. Eh, todos hacemos algo que a veces no lo hacemos bien, pero está bien porque así es como aprendemos y mejoramos. Dice que uh, los estudiantes en, en la clase deben de, eh, de esperar que van a trabajar duro, van a practicar todos los días para mejorarse cada día. Dice que aunque a lo mejor crezcan un poquito los estudiantes en un, una semana, dos semanas, tres semanas, está bien porque es crecimiento. Dice que él se graduó de CISAN con honores y le gusta jugar, uh, le gusta tocar la, la batería y también, uh, se me dice que sí es esa batería, ¿verdad? Los tambores. Um, y también le gusta Frankenstein. Before I go into, uh, into the other teachers, um, we, do, we do have, uh, we are in the process of hiring an English teacher. Our English teacher actually moved uh, to, a, to one of our other puck schools. Um, she, we were expecting her to be with us, but uh, a, a history position open for her. She loves history and she's going to be teaching eighth, eighth grade history uh, at another puck school. So we're in the process of hiring a, an English teacher and um, we're getting some great candidates. So um, right now we're going to be doing some interviews to get a, a math, an English teacher. Ahorita también estamos, antes de que, que siga, nomás les quiero avisar que estamos ahorita en el proceso de agarrar una maestra, de, un maestro, una maestra de inglés. La maestra de inglés que estaba con nosotros, hubo una oportunidad en las escuelas Puck, en otra escuela, para que ella fuera a enseñar uh, historia. Le encanta la historia, ella tiene, ella tiene la licencia para historia y para inglés, para, uh, para enseñar cualquiera de los dos. Entonces se le abrió una oportunidad en ser maestra del octavo grado para, la histor para historia en otra escuela. Entonces uh, tomó, esa, tomó, tomó ese, ese trabajo. Entonces ahorita estamos en el proceso de agarrar una, una maestra o un maestro de inglés. We also have Mr. Macedo, who is our PE teacher for sixth through eighth grade. We're really lucky this year because we not only have Mr. Macedo. We have two teachers in PE now. We, you on, only used to have one PE teacher for all three grades and it was tough. But now we have two PE teachers and I'll go over the other PE teacher. Um, Mr. Macedo has been teaching for five years. Um, uh, he, he's actually taught sixth, seventh and eighth grade, of course. He's a basketball coach. He graduated from CSUN. Something that he didn't put on here is that he also graduated from CCECHS. He's an alumni. He was actually part of the first graduating class as well. So if you can see, our students are coming back to uplift their communities and they're coming back to teach at our school. So it's wonderful to see that. Um, Mr. Macedo likes the Lakers, the Dodgers. Enough said, I love the Dodgers. Uh, students, parents, whenever you come to my office, I have a Dodger wall. Uh, I love the Dodgers. My, my staff knows that. Everybody knows that I have I'm Dodgered out. I love Dodgers and Mr. Macedo loves Dodgers as well. Um, so we're really, really excited to have Mr. Macedo another year here with us, especially because he is one, uh, one from the community. Um, aquí tenemos también al señor Macedo, que es el maestro de educación física. Uh, él uh, también es un, en uno de los estudiantes que fue de PUC. Se graduó también en la primera clase del 2008, que se graduó también y él es maestro de educación física. Lo bueno es que este año no solamente tenemos un maestro de educación física, tenemos dos. Ahora, ahorita les voy a hablar un poquito de la otra, la otra maestra, pero por muchos años solamente hemos tenido una, un maestro de educación física para los tres grados, pero ahora tenemos, um, ahora tenemos dos. Él se graduó de CSUN, uh, es un basketball coach, le encanta el basketball. Um, él también le encantan los Dodgers, los Lakers, uh, los Raiders y el Barcelona. So for sixth grade, we're going to be offering two art classes, two, vis uh, two, two uh, visual and performing art classes. Um, so we have Miss McPante, who is our sixth and seventh grade dance teacher. And then we have Miss Singleton, who is our sixth and eighth grade art teacher. Um, so two of our cohorts in sixth grade will be taking dance and two of the other cohorts, the other two cohorts will be taking um, art. And then in second semester, we switch them. Um, so These are the two visual and performing arts teachers that we offer here for the whole year. Um, we're really, really, really lucky because our students actually get to um, experience the visual and performing arts. We also have Ms. Mauries, who is the new PE teacher for sixth through eighth grade. So some of you will have Ms. Mauries as well. 
Estos son los maestros uh, de artes visuales. Uh, de, de, también tenemos a una maestra de baile, que es la señora Mike Pante, y tenemos a la señorita Singleton, que es la maestra de arte. Dos de los grupos, el primer semestre van a tomar baile y los otros dos grupos van a tomar arte y luego se cambian el segundo semestre, pero los tenemos aquí todo el año. Uh, también tenemos a la, a la nueva uh, maestra de educación física, que es la señorita Mauriez. Our inclusion specialist for seventh grade um, is Miss Torres. Am I correct? Yes, yes it is. Um, it's Miss Torres, um, our inclusion specialist. So she is the one that works with all of our special education students. Yes, for sixth grade, it says seventh grade here, but it's, no, I got the wrong one, I think. Yes, I do have the wrong one. For sixth grade is Miss, uh, Miss Silva. Miss Silva. So I do have the wrong one. I apologize. That is my fault. That it is actually Miss Silva who's um who's the inclusion specialist. I didn't change that. Um, so Miss Silva has been with us for a few years. She um the great thing about our students with with special education is that our teacher, our special education teacher, follows them all three grades. So we don't switch them every year. They stay with the same teacher every every year. So that way you have them for the three years. We're also very, very fortunate because we have our student service coordinators. Um, we, these, these, uh, this position is two years old, uh, but we added another person this year. So we're really excited. These student service coordinators are gonna help with building relationships in the school. Um, they're gonna help with discipline. They're gonna help with celebrations. Um, doing all kinds of wonderful things. Mr. Serrato is going to be in charge of our social media. So make sure you follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. We actually want to do a TikTok um, account as well. We're going to do some special dances. We're going to make students do some special dances and we'll put them in tic on TikTok. Um, so we're, we're really excited because these two uh, fine people are going, to be, are going to be doing some great things. They're also alumni. Uh, they also went to Puck schools. They went to CCMS and graduated from CCECHS. So as you can see, some of you guys, when you guys become older, maybe you're going to work for our schools. That'll be amazing. Um, también tenemos a nuestros estudiantes, a uh, nuestros uh, coordinadores de servicios para los estudiantes. Uh, estos son, es, una, es un nuevo trabajo que tenemos dos años, pero ahora pudimos poner otra persona. So ahora tenemos dos personas. Tenemos a la señorita Santos y al señor Cerrato. Lo bueno es que ellos nos van a ayudar con la disciplina, nos van a ayudar con las celebraciones de la escuela, nos van a ayudar en trabajar con los padres, con los estudiantes, hacer relaciones con los, uh, tener relaciones con los estudiantes afuera cuando hablen con ellos para que los conozcan, para que um, podamos trabajar juntos. Um, ellos también fueron graduados de Puck School, de las escuelas Puck, para que vean. Entonces uh, está la, el ciclo regresándose. Y puedo, no puedo esperar cuando sus estudiantes, a lo mejor también, cuando se gradúen de la high school y vayan al colegio y estén listos para regresar, vengan a trabajar con nosotros. So let's talk a little bit about the daily health screening. I'm, I'm also going to show a little quick video after so you guys can see what it looks like because you guys have never been in our campus or if you have, it's been really quick. So um, the daily health screening, Students, you have to drive, if you're dropping off your student by car, your student, you guys have to drive inside our school and we'll show you where. You have to drive inside our school and then drop them off inside, but they cannot get off right now until we take their temperature, um, which is, we take their temperature, they have to do a, a, a health screening through their phone on an app. Um, we're gonna send you the QR code tonight and all that information. Um, but the student has to stay in the car until they get a green screen and then they're good to go. They take their temperature and then they can get out of the car. I'm going to show you a quick video, but let me say it in Spanish really quick. Um, también para que sepan, queremos que sepan que tienen que tomar su, um, cada día tienen que venir y tomar el, ex, no es un examen, sino es, es el cuestionario o las preguntas de salud para que puedan los niños salirse de su carro. Entonces, si ustedes dejan a los estudiantes en carro, no los pueden dejar afuera, tienen que ser dejados adentro. Ustedes tienen que manejar para adentro y dejarlos aquí adentro. Pero antes de que me los saquen del carro, porque yo sé que ya los quieren que, que estén en la escuela, les tienen que tomar, uh, tienen que hacer una, el QR code en su teléfono, tienen que hacerlo y luego también les tomamos la temperatura y luego lo ponen en su teléfono y les va a salir la pantalla verde que quiere decir que están bien y luego los dejan salirse del carro. For any student that's walking, 
they can, we do have a pedestrian gate that they are able to come in through and we will have the same process. They have to get screened and then they have to get their temperature taken. También aquí, si los estudiantes no vienen en carro, están caminando, también tenemos una, una barda para peatones que pueden entrar um, ahí y ahí van a estar con lo mismo. Tienen que entrar, tienen que hacer su su um, cuestionario primero y luego lo puede y luego le toman la temperatura y luego pueden entrar. Les voy a enseñar un video ahorita para que puedan ver cómo es para que entren y qué es el proceso. I'm going to show you a quick video. This is from from last year. We made a quick video for our parents when students were going to return to school. So bear with me. I'm going to stop sharing my my. And then I'm going to share my other one. Can you guys see this screen? We're good? All right, so I am going to, oh wait, before I start sharing, actually it's okay because you don't need to listen to it, but um, let me go ahead and play it. Let me know if you guys can watch it. Um, are you guys good? Okay. So you guys drive up inside. Then you guys go all the way to CCMS side, and that's where you do your QR code. As you can see, Ms. Santos, Ms. Aditya is taking the temperature. Ms. Santos is doing her QR code, and then it turns into green. And that's exactly what they have to do. Parents, we don't want you guys to get off the car. See, I got in trouble trying to get off the car. I can't get off the car. They told me to stay in the car. And that's pretty much it on that one. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop sharing that one. Um, and let me go back. So queremos que sepan que tienen que entrar por la escuela de nosotros. Aquí enfrente de nuestra escuela está una, una barda donde los van a abrir y ahí tienen que entrar para que puedan dejar a su estudiante hasta, tienen que irse hasta el fondo en CCMS. Ahí es donde le van a tomar la temperatura, hacen su QR code y luego los pueden dejar salir. Let me go ahead and share my screen again. Sorry, everyone. Here we are. All right. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, we did the video, about the weekly COVID testing. So we do have to do a weekly COVID testing. Um, it doesn't matter if you're vaccinated or not. Staff and students have to take, have to do their, their COVID testing every week, once a week as of right now. Ahorita tienen que tomar los estudiantes el examen de COVID aquí en la escuela cada semana. No importa si los maestros o, o los estudiantes están vacunados o no, tienen que tomar el examen cada semana. Pero también um, queremos que sepan que lo vamos a hacer aquí en la escuela. Es gratuito, no les cobramos nada. Um, we don't charge for it. Of course, it's free. Um, we do have baseline testing next week uh, for students and staff. Uh, I am actually going, not going to send a link, but I'm going to, they're going to send you a link from Flow Health for you to register your student um, into the Flow Health system so they can be ready so that way we can um, test them next week. We will have COVID testing Monday, next Monday, August 9th through Thursday, August 12th from 9 to 3 p.m. Um, I will send that link for you to make an appointment. You can actually click on the appointment if whatever day you want to come in from 9 to 3 for you to come and take the COVID test. Um, también, Para los exámenes de la otra semana de COVID, porque tenemos que tener a los estudiantes que tomen un examen antes de que empiece la escuela. Uh, mañana, para la otra semana vamos a tenerlo del lunes, el 9 de agosto, al 12 de agosto, que es el jueves, de 9 de la mañana a 3 de la tarde. Uh, la, la, compañía, la compañía que está haciendo lo, los exámenes de COVID, les van a mandar un correo electrónico a ustedes para que matriculen a su estudiante en el sistema para que estén listos para tomar el, la prueba de COVID. Something that I did, and I'll say it at the end. Um, in order for your student to baseline test, your student needs to be enrolled in the Flow Health system, which uh, they're going to send you that. Um, if your student, because some sixth graders did come in with us for summer school, um, if your student came for summer camp, um, they do not have to, if they took tests here, uh, COVID test, they do not have to register again because they're already registered. So that's the great thing. If, if they came already, they don't have to register anymore. They just take their COVID test next week. Si el estudiante, si los estudiantes del sexto grado, habían unos estudiantes que vinieron con nosotros para, uh, para el summer, para el verano, vinieron para las clases de verano que tuvimos el campamento de, de verano. 
uh, y tomaron su examen aquí de COVID, no tienen que matricularlos otra vez porque ya están en el sistema. Así que no se tienen que preocupar de que los tenga que matricular. So, si ustedes se acuerdan, ¿quién vino a, a la escuela? Let's talk a little bit about uniforms. Um, this year, we're kind of changing some stuff. Um, beginning this year, we have a vendor. So we have somebody that's going to be selling our uniforms um, for the students. All uniform tops, which is the tops and the PE shorts, have to have a logo on it. So the Puck LCA logo. And our vendor has them. Our store has them. Um, their polo shirts, PE shirts, and the shorts, they all have the uh the logo and if you want to buy a sweater they have to have the logo um with the lca logo on it so that way um you know we we make sure that we know who's who because we have three schools here so every school has a different color that way we can be able to distinguish who is who um the, uh so the pants on the bottom is black pants um or shorts it can be black pants or shorts and it has to be like the dicky or or uh what's the other um like the uh, cargo type, uh, you know, shorts or whatever, or pants. Um, no denim. We don't want students wearing any jeans, no denim uh, wearing. Not unless we tell them they can wear them for a free dress or something like that, then that's different. Um, shoes and belts, students' choice. We don't, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't care what color you bring. It's up to the student. We don't want to, you know, make choices for the student. Um, as it is, they already have to wear a uniform. So um, the great thing is that in, in LCA, our sixth graders are going to have PE three days, three times a week, three days. A, yeah, three days a week. They're going to have three days a week. They're going to have PE. So what we're asking families, instead of you, if you don't want to buy any polo shirts with the collars, just go ahead and buy PE shirts and PE shorts and they can wear PE, their PE uniform all week. It's okay that if they wear their PE uniform all week, it's up to you if they want to wear their polo shirt and the black pants, that's fine. The black shorts or black pants, um, that's fine. But we don't want you to go out and spend money if you don't have to for the polo shirts because they're a little expensive. They're about $13, $14. We don't want you spending that much. I think the PE shirts are around seven, so it's a little cheaper. Um, Mr. B? Yes. A couple of questions in the chat. What if parents already bought uniform and it does not have a logo on it? They have to have the logo. Um, it is it is a requirement that the, they have to have the logo. Um, if uh, if any family has that, come talk to us and then we can we can uh, talk about it. And then um, when will the selling of uniforms begin? Actually, they're already ready. I'm going to send the link out with the information and you can go buy it. And I'll, I'll it's on the next slide. I'll go ahead and answer that question right now. Um, para los uniformes, solamente queremos hablar que tenemos una persona que va a vender los uniformes. Uh, tienen que tener el logotipo de la escuela. Entonces, por ejemplo, la polo shirt, la, la camisa de polo tiene que tener el logotipo, los, la camisa de educación física y los chores de educación física tienen que tener el logotipo. And the only reason why we say that is because we do have three schools and we can distinguish who's who. La razón que tenemos que tener el logotipo es porque nos ayuda para distinguir cuáles estudiantes están en cuál escuela porque tenemos tres escuelas aquí. Um, los pantalones pueden ser negros, pueden ser chores o pantalones, pero que no sean de mezclilla. Pueden ser como el tipo de, um, el, uh, puede ser dickies o puede ser cargo pants um, de ese material, pero que no sean de mezclilla. Uh, y luego los zapatos, los tenis shoes y, y el, el cinturón si usan un cinto, no importa el color. Eso, eso, es, eso ya es de ustedes a lo que quieran ponerse los estudiantes. Lo que sí tenemos es que vamos a tener en el sexto grado, los estudiantes van a tener tres días a la semana, van a tener educación física. So se pueden poner toda la semana si gustan, en vez de comprar la camisa polo y pantalones negros y todo eso es más caro. Si quieren solamente comprar las camisas de educación física y los chores de educación física, eso lo pueden usar toda la semana, no tienen que tener la, la, la camisa de, de polo. Están un poquito más baratas que las camisas de polo. Si me hace que las camisas de polo las venden como de 13 a 14 dólares y las camisas de educación física son como 7 dólares, algo así. Así que por favor, si quieren ustedes, los, los estudiantes tienen la opción de que pueden usar el, el, el uniforme de educación física toda la semana. Here's the uniform shop information. You don't have to worry about it. I'm going to send you an email today, tonight. I'm going to send you an email with the link of the video. Um, of tonight's meeting. Um, it's going to have the QR code for your health screening. Um, you're going to have the supply list as well. I'm going to send it. 
um, you're also going to get the information for the uniform place. So this uniform place is on San Fernando Road and Penrose and Sun Valley. If you go up San Fernando Road, make a left on Penrose and it's uh, it'll be right after the train tracks. Esta es la información para, para los uniformes. No se preocupe porque les voy a mandar todo esto en un correo electrónico con la información. Ahora en la noche les voy a mandar el video de esta junta. Les voy a mandar el enlace para, uh, para, uh, para que hagan su, su cita para el COVID, para el examen de COVID para la siguiente semana. Les voy a mandar la información de los uniformes, uh, la lista de lo que necesitan comprar para los estudiantes del sexto grado. Todo eso se lo voy a mandar a ustedes ahora en un correo electrónico. Let's talk a little bit about independent studies. All right, about uniforms. Do you know if the shirts are 100% cotton? Yes, they are. Yes. 100% uh, algodón, las camisas. Um, let's talk a little bit about independent studies. There was a survey that went out to families a couple of weeks ago uh, asking families if they were interested in independent studies because some of our families probably don't feel comfortable or some of the students don't feel comfortable coming to school. Um, we had about 180 families that filled out the survey. Out of those 80, 180 families, we had about 25 families that were interested. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about what, what this is. So we, we contracted a company called Edgenuity that will be doing the teaching synchronously and asynchronously for those students that qualify for it. Um, our teachers will not be teaching this. Um, it would be a company that will be teaching this. They're still part of our school. They still, you know, they're still enrolled in our school, but they are going to be doing everything with that company. Um, and the company has their own credential teachers. Um, and we will have a meeting with those families tomorrow, actually, um, for those families that were interested in the survey, we're having a meeting. Um, and then Puck Schools, what they did is they prioritized the independent studies program in the following order. So what they did is that any student with an IEP or a 504 plan has priority and also the students that have a medical condition um, with the doctor's note uh, or doctor's orders. Um, they have the, they have a priority before anyone else. So we have to give it up to them first. Um, so that's what we're going by first. And then we'll go from there. So if you filled out the survey and you were interested, you you did get an, you did get a call today um, to have a meeting. So we will be sending you that information as well. Um, para hablar un poquito de las, de las estudios independiente, le estamos dando la opción. Hace dos semanas se les mandó un, una encuesta a los papás the Lakeview Charter Academy, preguntándoles que si estaban interesados en la, en la, en los estudios independientes, porque hay muchos estudiantes que a lo mejor no quieren regresar a la escuela porque tienen miedo, o los papás, lo que sea, lo, X cosa, ¿verdad? Uh, se mandó esta encuesta de la, de los 300 y algo estudiantes, uh, familias que tenemos, um, 180 estudiantes, uh, familias fueron los que uh, hicieron la encuesta. De, esa, de esos 180, 25 familias dijeron que estaban interesados. Pero voy a hablar un poquito de qué es el programa. El programa es que esos estudiantes que califican para este programa, um, contratamos a una compañía que va a tener a sus propios maestros. No van a ser nuestros maestros que les van a enseñar a sus hijos. Va a ser esta compañía con sus propios maestros que tienen, uh, que tienen la licencia y todo. Pero ellos son los que van a dar las clases para los estudiantes. Nosotros no les vamos a dar la clase. También queremos que sepan que las escuelas de PAC Hicimos uh, la lista de prioridad. Los primeros estudiantes que están primeros en la lista son los estudiantes de educación especial o que tienen un 504, un plan de 504, o los estudiantes que tienen una condición medical que es que son uh, órdenes del doctor. Entonces, esa es la prioridad que estamos haciendo primero antes de los demás estudiantes. Entonces, um, los, los papás que, que llenaron la encuesta y que estaban interesados, ahora se les habló y vamos a tener una junta. So the vision for Puck Lakeview Charter Academy. Um, at Puck Lakeview Charter Academy, we are creating an equitable space where all students feel valued and safe so that they are always growing. Our goal is for us, all students to fulfill Puck's three commitments. Uh, we will develop students who think critically and positively, speak thoughtfully and act with integrity. I talked about this at the beginning so that all students can be their, their best selves now and forever. So queremos que sepan que aquí la visión de, de Puck Lakeview Charter Academy, queremos crear uh, una, un, un espacio que es de igual para todos uh, y que se sientan los estudiantes valuados y que se sientan sanos um, y que siempre están creciendo. 
Uh, también queremos que ellos sepan que queremos que sigan las, los tres, las tres promesas que hablamos, que piensen criticalmente, positivamente, hablen bien y que también uh, estén con integridad uh, para que todos los estudiantes puedan ser sus mejores personas eh, ahora y en el, en el futuro. So here are the sixth grade expectations uh, for sixth grade. Aquí están las expectativas para el sexto grado. Uh, students are expected to be a great role model for the rest of the grades and their peers. Um, respect each other and adults and all adults. Um, students are expected to pass all of their classes with the C or better. So I wanna, I wanna go over this a little bit. I want you guys to know students, we have a grade of A, B, C or fail. No D, we have no Ds here at Puck Schools. Um, we have, you either pass with the 70 or above. So 70 to a 79 is a C, an 80 to an 89 is a B, and a 90 to a 100 is an A. So we want you to know that those are the grades that we give out here at Puck Schools. We have no Ds. So either, if you have anything below us, a 70% is, a, is not a passing grade. So we want you to know that if you fail one or more classes, you might not be eligible for some celebrations that we have here at LCA, but we do have something great for you guys. Um, for the parents and the students, we want you to know that um, we will have something called super support days. Um, this is when we, the students that are not passing teachers will choose those students. We have a minimum day for the rest of the school. They get out at 12, but the students that need that extra help will stay USB here until 3.40 to do that support and to pass their classes. So we're really, really um, excited about that. Um, and it's gonna be done four times a year. So they have a chance, if they're not passing their classes, they have a chance to pass their classes. So we don't want them to be in that position if they don't have to be in that position, but if they are, we will have some supports for them. So aquí están las expectativas del sexto grado. Queremos que ellos sean buenas personas, que um, se porten bien, que sean positivos. Uh, que se respeten uno al otro y también a los adultos. Uh, ellos están, es, uh, es, esperamos que ellos pasen sus clases. La cosa con las escuelas PUC es que no tenemos el grado de D. Aquí tenemos A, B, C y F. Entonces, si tienen un 70% o más alto, están pasando las clases. Si tienen meno, menos de 70%, no están pasando la clase, la están fallando. Entonces, um, eso es algo que les puede... Uh, les puede quitar las, um, como si tenemos celebraciones, no van a ser parte de esas celebraciones porque los vamos a tener en la clase para que hagan su trabajo y pasen sus clases. Otra cosa que vamos a hacer para, para ayudarles y apoyar a los estudiantes es que vamos a hacer algo que se llama Super Support Day. Uh, es un día de, de apoyo donde los estudiantes, todos los estudiantes salen a las 12 de la tarde, pero los estudiantes que necesitan esa ayuda para pasar sus clases se van a quedar hasta las 3, trabajando con los maestros, haciendo sus trabajos para que pasen sus clases. Así que ellos van a tener, van a tener otra oportunidad para poder pasar sus clases antes de que demos las calificaciones. Así que es muy importante que no queremos que estén en ese lugar si no tienen que estar. Si pueden pasar todas sus clases y hacer bien, es más mejor de que tengan que regresar y hacer las clases otra vez. So here, we're going to talk about the schedule. So we do have a long day three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, our schedule is from 7.40 a.m. to 3.40 p.m. It's an, it's an eight-hour day. And let me tell you why we need to do this. The reason why we need to do this is that California, per California, we have to have 300 minutes per each subject. So we have to teach 300 minutes a week for math, for science, for English, and for history. So we have to have that many minutes a week, and this is the only way that it's gonna work. So three times a week, they're here from 7.40 to 3.40. On Tuesdays, they're 7.40 to 1.48, which is a little less. And then on Fridays, they're here from 7.40 to 2.38. So they get out an hour earlier on Fridays. Um, we will send you this as well. Uh, next week, when we send the uh, schedules to the students, we will send this to for you guys as well. Um, on Fridays, we will be doing strategic um, intervention for those students that need, that need that extra push, extra help in English and in math. Especially in math, we need, those, we need that help. Um, and then student schedule will be sent out next week uh, to the student and parent emails along with your schedule. Um, I mean, schedules and, um, your, and, the, and the school schedule. So queremos hablar un poquito del, del 
um, del horario de la escuela. Um, tres veces por semana van a estar aquí de 7.40 a las de 7.40 hasta las 3.40 de la tarde, que son ocho horas. El, el lunes, miércoles y jueves están de 7.40 a 3.40. Los martes están aquí de 7.40 a 1.48, que casi son dos horas menos. Y luego el viernes de, están aquí de 7.40 de la mañana a 2.38, que es una hora menos. La razón que tenemos que tener tantas horas para los estudiantes es que el estado de California requiere que tengamos 300 minutos para cada clase por semana que tenemos que enseñar. Entonces tenemos que tener 300 minutos de matemáticas, de inglés, de historia, de, de ciencias por semana. Entonces, por eso tenemos que tener el, el, los largos días, pero también tenemos dos días que son menos. Los viernes vamos a, van, van a salir los estudiantes una hora antes, pero vamos a tratar de que los estudiantes que necesitan ese, esa extra ayuda se puedan quedar hasta las 3.40 para ayudarles. Los maestros van a hacer a intervención a estrategia, estrategiamente para que les puedan ayudar. Los, los horarios de los estudiantes y también el horario de la, de la escuela se les va a mandar para la siguiente semana para que sepan en qué grupo está su estudiante. We're going to send you your schedule so you know what cohort you're in next week. One last thing, reading expectation. I know that some of us probably don't like to read that much. Some of us, you know, we don't want to do it. We're a little lazy. Let me tell you something. It's really important that you guys do it because reading is going to help you especially if you read and you practice 20 to 25 minutes a day. Let me, let me tell you, how many of you like sports? Like you like playing maybe soccer, baseball, softball, uh, football, anything like that? You have to practice, right? In order for you to get better. You can't just go out and play into the field if you don't know how to play it because you're going to get played really bad, right? So you need to practice to get better. And that's maybe one time, two times, three times a week that you have to keep practicing and practicing and get better at it. It's the same thing with reading. I'm reading. I just bought myself two books. I bought two books from Ms. Ashraf. We're going to be reading these. We have to get better. And the only way that we're going to get better is if we practice, 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 right? Read, read, read. And this would help the students to build skills, writing skills, all that. It's going to help you. It's going to help you to get those skills ready for high school and beyond. So it's really important that you guys know that, that, that we want you to be reading You're going to be reading here at school, but you're also going to be reading at home, 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, una expectativa que queremos, and this is a homework for the parents. We need you guys to be on board with us. Please help us out. Push your student. I don't want to hear, oh, it's because my son doesn't like to read. Well, who's, who's a parent? Please, you guys are the ones in charge. So please don't, you know, this is something that's going to help them. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to harm them. It's actually going to make them better readers. So um, please help us with that. Una tarea que les vamos a dar a los papás es que tenemos una expectativa para que lean los estudiantes en la casa. Yo sé que a veces muchos papás vienen conmigo. Ay, maestro, es que a mi hijo no le gusta la lectura. Y pues yo le digo, pero no hace nada. Pues, ¿quién es el adulto en la casa? Ustedes son los que tienen el, la, la dicha en la casa. Ustedes son los que tienen la palabra. Por favor, tienen que leer. Es como un deporte. A los que les gusta jugar soccer, uh, fútbol americano, uh, baloncesto, béisbol. Lo, lo que le guste jugar al estudiante no pueden ser buenos sin la práctica. Tienen que practicar todo el tiempo para que se mejoren y se mejoren. Es lo mismo con la lectura. Si no leen libros, no van a mejorar ellos. Tienen que, eso les va a ayudar para mejorar en sus, en sus hábitos, pero también en su lectura, también en su escritura, también en el vocabulario. Les ayudan muchas maneras. Y um, es algo que vamos a hablar mucho este año. This is something that we're going to talk a lot about with the families to help us out. Here's a, the sixth grade supply list. Don't worry, I'm gonna send it to you tonight. Everything's ready to go. I'm just gonna wait for the video to upload and then I can send you everything. But this is a supply list for you guys for sixth grade um, because these are some of the things that you are gonna need for sixth grade. Estas son las cosas que se van a necesitar para los estudiantes. No quiero que se me preocupen, se los voy a mandar por, por uh, correo electrónico. Les voy a mandar para que tengan la lista. No tienen que tomar foto, no tienen que hacer nada. Se los voy a mandar ahora en la noche. Uh, en cuanto el video ya esté listo para mandarle, les voy a mandar toda la información en un correo electrónico. I just want to tell you guys, uh, on behalf of Ms. Ashraf and myself, um, you are our partners. Uh, we are a team. Somos un equipo de parte de la señora Ashraf y yo. Uh, somos un equipo, los papás, los estudiantes, los maestros, todos somos un equipo. Estamos aquí para ayudarles. 
Yo siempre digo que no están, ustedes no están aquí para servirnos a nosotros, sino nosotros a ustedes. Muchas gracias por tener esa, esa dicha de, de que podemos nosotros enseñar a esos estudiantes. We want to thank you for believing in LCA um, and letting us teach your child. Um, you are not here to serve us. We're here to serve you because because of you, we have a job. Um, and if, if it wasn't because of you, we wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have a job. So we want to thank you for that. Um, you are our partners. It's really important that you guys understand that. Um, connect with your, connect with your child in the school is really important. Please communication is key. Um, talk to your student every day. How did it go? Good. What did you do? I don't know. Well, you can ask a lot of questions. Oh, really? What's something that you like today? What's something that uh, made you smile? What's something that you learned in math that you didn't know before? Those are the questions that you can ask because you know what? Students are smart. They're going to be like, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, so, you know, so please ask them questions. Communication is, is really important, especially during this time when they're going through adolescent years. Uh, it's really important. Com communicate with the teachers, with uh, the office staff, with the admin. If you need us for anything, please communicate with us. Check us on, on social media. Please check your phone on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, you know, you can like us. Uh, Mr. Serrato is going to be uploading a lot of stuff on social media, so it's great. Um, and then just like us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're also thinking of getting a TikTok account. So if you, a lot of you like TikTok, please um, follow us on TikTok as well. We're going to be doing some crazy dances. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're going to be having some fun, but we really appreciate you and, and we want to thank you. Um, ustedes son nuestros, nuestros personas que es el equipo de nosotros. La comunicación es muy importante para las familias. Hablen con sus hijos. Pregúntenles cómo les fue en el día. No los dejen nomás que les digan, bien, ¿qué hiciste? No me acuerdo. No, no hice nada. Pregúntenles qué es una cosa que te gustó ahora que no sabías antes. Qué es algo que aprendiste que no sabías antes. Um, se les preguntan cosas así porque la comunicación entre ellos ahorita en la adolescencia es muy importante para que ustedes puedan tener una buena relación. También comuníquense con nosotros en la oficina, uh, con los maestros, con nosotros en los, los administradores. Revisen nuestro, nuestras redes sociales, por favor. Um, Ponle un like en, en el Face, en el Instagram, en, en el Twitter, uh, por favor, porque vamos a poner muchas cosas ahí para, para que vean lo que estamos haciendo. Uh, the important date that I want you to remember is that August 16th, which is a Monday, is the first day of school. Campus opens at 7 a.m. So this is when we start. Uh, well, we open the campus at 7 a.m. That's the earliest. We start school at 7.40. Uh, students should be dropped off between 7 and 7.30 in the morning. Um, you won't have any... Uh, You won't run into a lot of traffic if you come between those times. Let me, I, I promise you, you will not get a lot of traffic. Um, and we will be serving breakfast for students. All students, all students um, are, are going to get breakfast um, and they get it for free and they get it during nutrition, um, during, a, during nutrition break. So queremos que sepan que una fecha muy importante es el 16 de agosto es un lunes. Es el primer día de clases. Um, el, el, la escuela se abre a las 7 de la mañana, pero los estudiantes no empiezan hasta las 7.40. Queremos que los dejen a los estudiantes entre las 7 y 7.40 de la mañana. A ese tiempo no hay mucho tráfico. Eh. Hay menos tráfico y no se tienen que esperar en línea. Y también les vamos a dar el desayuno a los estudiantes durante su recreo. Uh, esto es gratis para todos los estudiantes. Yes, Ms. Ashra. Um, after school hours, what are the after school program? The hours? after school program hours are from 3.40 to 6 o'clock in the afternoon. So tenemos uh, el programa de después de escuela de las 3.40 a las 6 de la tarde. We will be giving, we will be printing an application for you for next week. When you come in for COVID testing, we'll give you the application. You can take it home, fill it out. If you're interested, it's free of charge. You don't have to pay anything. We have the after school program. We have enrichment. We have homework help. We have all kinds of great stuff. We have sports um, in the after school program. So please, we will give you uh, applications if you're interested next week when you come for COVID testing. Para el programa de después de escuela, si están interesados, les vamos a dar la aplicación la siguiente semana que vengan para lo, los exámenes de COVID. Um, queremos que sepan también que uh, tenemos muchas cosas que hacen en el programa de después de escuela. Tenemos deporte, tenemos ayuda en la tarea. Es cuando hacen su tarea. Estamos ahorita trabajando en muchas cosas que queremos a, a hacer en el programa después de escuela. Es gratis. Uh, les vamos a dar la aplicación para otra semana. Si quieren uh, llenarla y la traen el primer día de escuela, se lo dan a sus estudiantes. <laughs> Welcome to Lakeview. Um, 
this is going to be you guys in three years. This is going to be in three years. Uh, our graduations are always at CSUN. We always do them at, the, at uh, Cal State uh, Northridge. That's where we do our celebration of, of uh, celebrating our wonderful students. Um, we do our graduation at CSUN. This is a picture that we take in front of the Oviat Library. Every year we take this picture. Um, we're excited. In three years, they're going to be graduating. They're going to be in this picture. So we're really excited for that. Um, Bienvenidos a Lakeview Charter Academy. En tres años, aquí van a estar sus estudiantes tomándose esta foto para la graduación. Nuestra graduación lo hacemos en, en CSUN, en la Universidad de Northridge. Uh, este retrato se toma siempre en frente de la biblioteca de CSUN. Y luego hacemos la graduación ahí en CSUN. Invitamos a las familias. Um, as you can see, you can see the gold cords and the silver cords. This is what we're talking about. Welcome. Felicidades. Um, and remember, we are warriors. Somos guerreros. We're going to do some great stuff. Um, we're really excited. We just want to thank you for your time um, and for being with us and, and for trusting us um, and teaching your student. We're really excited to have a wonderful time and a wonderful year uh, with the teachers and with the students. So um, right now our teachers are in meetings with us. Um, they'll be coming in tomorrow as well. I'll be putting some stuff up on social media tomorrow because we're going to make them do some fun stuff. So um, that way you guys can see the teachers having some fun. Um, they're going to be doing some competitions, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to put it up on social media. We're going to put it up on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook so you guys can see your teachers um, in action. Uh, so we're really excited. We want to thank you for everything. Thank you for your time. Thank you for entrusting us. Uh, we are very, very excited. Muchas gracias por su tiempo. Queremos decirles que estamos aquí para servirles. Muchas gracias por darnos la dicha de trabajar con sus estudiantes. Por ustedes tenemos un trabajo, por ustedes estamos aquí. Um, mañana, esta semana tenemos juntas con los maestros. Mañana van a venir los, los maestros y les vamos a tomar unos videos. Los voy a poner en Instagram, en Facebook, en Twitter para que vean. Los voy a hacer correr a los maestros. Los vamos a hacer, hacer muchas cosas para que los conozcan. Um, bienvenidos. Muchas gracias por su tiempo uh, y que tengan buenas, buenas tardes. Um, y, y pues ahora ya es el tiempo de la cena. Ojalá que no les quite mucho tiempo de la cena. Um, for COVID testing, that's a great question. Um, we are working because before we used to do the spit, um, they are working on, a, on another company to do the swab. If they do the swab, it might be on the cheek. So para los exámenes de COVID, Estamos ahorita revisando con otra compañía para ver si los hacen en, uh, con el Q-tip, pero lo van a hacer en el, en, el, en el cachete, no en la nariz. Porque estábamos haciendo el examen de COVID ahorita con, con, um, uh, con escupiendo pues en un tubito y oh, pobrecito los estudiantes duran mucho para poner, para poner la, la saliva en, en el tubito. Así que um, vamos a trabajar en eso. Para la otra semana les vamos a, van a saber cuál es lo que vamos a hacer, pero vamos a hacer la del, la del Q-tip. Um, muchas gracias por su tiempo. Que tengan buenas noches. Uh, thank you so much for your time and have a great night. Um, I will be sending this video. So in case you guys have uh, any questions or anything that you want to watch over, um, it's there. Um, and also the, all the information, I'll be sending it tonight. Toda la información se los voy a mandar ahora en la noche. Muchas gracias por su tiempo. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everybody. Que tengan buenas noches. Sí, buenas Muchas noches. gracias. Bye. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Gracias. Bye. Gracias. Bye. Gracias. Bye. Gracias. Bye. Buenas noches. Bye. Buenas noches. Bye. Buenas noches. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Buenas noches. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. 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 Bye.